Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1874. One year later, he formed the Bell Telephone Company. In 1880, he founded the Alexander Graham Bell Laboratory, known today as Bell Labs. AT&T, at the time a subsidiary of Bell, was given control of Bell Labs in 1809 due to restrictive Massachusetts corporate laws. And in 1969, two employees of Bell Lab, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, created Unix. What is now known as Unix was initially intended for internal use as a development platform that retained the community and interaction of its users and to play a video game. This would be several years before the release of Pong, which began the video game industry as we know it today. And they were writing that OS for an old, unused mini computer. Ken Thompson had written the game Space Travel on an early mainframe running Multics, the multiplexed information and computing service, a time-sharing OS being developed by MIT with the support of Bell Labs and General Electric. But Bell Labs withdrew support when MIT was unable to deliver a production-ready Multics in time and instead installed GE's own OS, the General Electric Comprehensive Operating System, or GCOS, onto the mainframe. As GCOS was written in assembly language, this required Ken Thompson to convert everything to Fortran via punch cards for the new operating system, which was not only tedious, but GCOS was not as full-featured as Multics. Moreover, reorganization within Bell Labs split the research department and the compute services department, which tracked time-sharing usages where it was discovered playing space travel cost the company between $50 and $75 per game played. Discovering an older, unused DEC PDP-7 minicomputer in another department, Ken started to once again port space travel, but decided there had to be an easier way. Dennis Ritchie had some ideas for how to incorporate the things about Multics they liked, and based on that, Ken Thompson authored his own file system, floating point libraries, and assembler for the PDP-7, while Dennis Ritchie created the C programming language in which to construct utilities to the hardware and re-implement the Unix kernel. As they didn't have to share this box to play their game, as a play on words from Multiplexed Information and Computing Service, they called theirs Uniplexed Information and Computing Service or Unix for short. The rest, as is often said, is history. Shortly after Unix was developed, it was released only to academia and government institutions where it grew its foothold, also where it branched. In 1975, Ken Thompson took a leave of absence from Bell Labs and returned to his alma mater, Berkeley, where he installed Unix on a PDP-11 mini computer, and he continued to grow and develop it. It diverged into its own operating system, known as BSD, for Berkeley Software Distribution. There was a rivalry between BSD being mostly supported by colleges and programmers and Unix, which was now being exploited commercially and sold to businesses. Many of the big iron systems, that being SGI, Sun, HP, Microsoft, and of course IBM, developed their own flavor of Unix for their own in-house architectures and running on their own hardware some choosing what is now known as System 5 for the AT&T version, and the others, BSD. These are both terms you'll still see today when using Unix, though they've mostly been combined through the efforts of the POSIX standard as outlined by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, for portability and conformability, making management easier. Cray Research developed Unicost Unix in 1985 for their supercomputer a highly specialized computer which was used primarily for research. Cray was a subsidiary of HP, which was purchased by SGI in 1996. But when SGI later went out of business, HP ended up buying them back in 2019, coming full circle. Cray's Unix is not noteworthy, but their systems today are consistently the fastest supercomputers in the world, all running Cray OS a version of SUSE Linux developed in conjunction with Hewlett Packard. SGI, or Silicon Graphics Incorporated, developed the MIPS processor, a reduced instruction set or RISC CPU for running their version of Unix, IRIX. While most of SGI's clients were government, energy, and scientific communities, 
They were more colloquially known for their high-end graphics capability well suited for computer-aided design and special effects companies. In the movie Jurassic Park, where the little girl sees the computer and says, It's a Unix system. I know this. They were showing an SGI. SGI is also responsible for bringing the dinosaurs to life in the movie. After purchasing Cray Research, they rebranded their server system interconnects CrayLink to highlight the sheer speed at which they operated. Irix is responsible for the XFS file system, which is made available in all modern enterprise Linux systems. Sun Microsystems, so named for Stanford University Networks, developed the popular Spark Risk processor on which to run their version of BSD Sun OS, later System 5 Solaris. A render farm of Sun Microsystems computers also brought us the first Toy Story movie. Cray Research's enterprise division made a supercomputer from Spark processors, but that division was sold to Sun Microsystems after the SGI acquisition, who rebranded it and sold it as a Sun product running Sun Solaris. Solaris is responsible for the ZFS file system, which is used today in storage area networks and network attached storage nodes for its ability to address 256 quadrillion zettabytes, the Z in ZFS purportedly standing for zettabyte, which is 1 billion terabytes. Hewlett Packard developed first PA RISC, then later, in collaboration with Intel, the Itanium CPU for their version of Unix, HPUX. To note, Itanium isn't RISC, rather, very long instruction word, or VLIW. SGI also migrated from their MIPS processor to Itanium, but simultaneously moved away from IRIX to SUSE Linux on these chips. HP currently sells the Cray supercomputer, running Cray OS. HPUX is responsible for giving us ACLs, or access control lists, used in all Linux distributions today. IBM developed their version of Unix, AIX, for a number of processor architectures they've owned. AIX is responsible for journaled file systems, also used in every file system of every distribution of Linux today. Lastly, Microsoft. Microsoft was one of the largest license holders of Unix at one time, with their Xenix operating system, one of the few Unixes to be made for the x86 architecture. This eventually turned into SCO Unix, which smaller businesses used as it was far less expensive than RISC hardware. When Linux was released for x86, SCO sued Novell, at the time the owner of SUSE, as they believed they owned the right to x86-based Unix code. The courts disagreed, handing the victory to Novell and SUSE. Microsoft is responsible for file locking in semaphores, which are used in all Linux distributions today. Of these big iron Unix systems, only AIX is still developed today. Though many government, military, and corporate clients still run many of these operating systems under legacy support for a variety of reasons. Hobbyists continue to use and develop these systems in an unofficial capacity. BSD is also still being developed, albeit under three distinct umbrellas, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD. Which brings us to present Unix. See that MacBook in front of you? Under that shiny aqua gooey sits the Darwin kernel, the beating heart of Mac OS. And pulling up a terminal gives you the full power of a POSIX compliant Unix system. Access granted. Thank you.